sure every now and then I see these kind of old topology memes going around. They're not even memes, they're like guides, but because of their age, I consider them memes. So I have one displayed on screen and I just wanna go about attempting to get the result that they're talking about uh, in, in today's climate. So let's just press X and I'm going to just add a cylinder, but instead of letting the cylinder be the way it is, we're gonna change the cap type to be nothing, just simplifying our day. And what I wanna do is look at it from top view, shift A, add a plane, and we're just gonna scale the plane in a little bit. I'll press Control shift tab to set my snap to to be vertex. So when I press G and then Z, when I hold Control, I can snap it precisely to this area. So while we're looking in top view in solid mode, we can't really see much, but if we go in wireframe mode, we can actually see how close we are to our boundaries. So the top of this is a 32 round cylinder and we would know that if we had statistics on so now that we have statistics we can see that it's 32 rounds meaning that we have to subdivide this to be 32 rounds and so let's right click subdivide and, and then from here we can just grab all the edges on the side and give it a count and it's 32 so we can just merge this together and by right clicking and choosing to bridge edge loops while you're in edge mode so i have to press two for that we can choose to bridge edge loops and we've now completed the puzzle. So the next part of this is talking about smoothing the result. So I don't know how you guys smooth, but I guess if I did it, I would use loop tools built into Blender and use relax. And let's see what solutions we have. Let's change it to 25. And let's jump back to cubic. We probably want to stay in linear. We're just looking to see what we're getting here. With this, we could recircle it. I mean, I'm just gonna cheat and just press Alt-Shift-S in order to bring up the option to turn it into a sphere and then move the mouse in order to re-spherize it. But all that is so unnecessary. In fact, my response to this image was, couldn't you just, you know, press Alt-E and use grid fill and look at it from top view and play with your offsets until you get a nice amount and then that is what you can call a day in fact we could even add another loop here grab this loop and let's see how relax treats us in loop tools and relax just goes right into the center so we have to just scale that back out but now we see that this is solved with a grid fill and this is solved with us transplanting a plane in but really that is so excessive in fact, if we really wanted to smooth this, we could use the smooth system within hard ops, meaning that if we look at this, we don't have any sharp marked edges. So if I press Q and sharpen, we've now marked all these edges. So this means if I were to go under add modifier and we were to click on smooth, we see that shift clicking will create an auto vertex group. So let's just shift click and we see that we're able to basically relax every part of the geometry that isn't the ed edge loops on the end. And as we roll too far, things just get really crazy. But right before they get crazy, they get pretty nice. In fact, that's actually the result that we want. Same with up top. So now if we just turn the smooth mod off, we can see what we're getting before versus what we're, or this is what we were getting before and this is what we're getting now. But that's it, just wanted to do a quick video just going over this old meme. Before finishing, we ought to at least convert this to a subdivision mesh. So I'm just gonna jump back into solid and a popular comment I've noticed is people asking about me shift clicking to use select tool in order to press B and add bevel spacers in order to protect the boundaries. We do also have the alternative of just using Blender to do it. So I'm just gonna unmark this area. And basically if we grab this edge and we were to unmark it, we could always, I'm going to dissolve that. We could just press control B and then roll the wheel once and then press P and move our profile all the way to one. And now we have the desired result. However, this is something I call soling the bevel, meaning that the next time I grab an edge and I press control B, I'm also going to get that same thing that I left off on. And I just hate that. I always want my profile to be 0.5 so that I can just bevel edges smoothly. And to, call, to do that now, I have to press P and move my mouse until it says 0.5. Also, I could just click and apply and use the F9 and set our profile back to 0.5, which, you know, suddenly bringing this up, it actually looks even more involved. Where's the profile? 
that's under shape. All right, we'll just roll with that. So I'll press 0.5 and press enter. And we could roll a few segments in and now this has been reset to basically a general bevel. So even if we undid it, we can now press control B and we now have our bevel back. So sometimes it's just a lot of work to return the Edimo bevel to its previous glory. So for that reason, I just have a special bevel just for spacing things out. So whenever I get in and crease things up, I can still go in and add a nice rounded bevel.